Hello, I'm the CNC repairman. Are you getting alarm 121, low lube, or have any idea that you have a problem with your lube system? I'm gonna show you a quick overview, how to troubleshoot it, and how to do some maintenance on it. To start with, this is the lube panel on the back of most machines built, say, pre-2002 era. Your machine probably doesn't look this pretty. This one looks pretty nice. The system has a lube panel right here that'll then pump lube throughout the machine. It gives lube to every linear truck, it gives lube to the ball screw and to the spindle. If you have a mill, or three axis mill, you're gonna have five lubricating points on each axis. Four for each truck, one for the ball screw, and one more for the spindle. So if you go to replace your metering kits, you're gonna get 15 metering kits plus one for the spindle. There's an inline filter here that you can replace for your lube system, and there's also this suction filter here that goes inside of the tank on the bottom of this. When troubleshooting this system, the first thing you wanna look for is does it build pressure? There's a little gear inside here that runs at about a 20 minute cycle. Once it completes a cycle, there's a lobe on a cam. It pushes this plunger up and then it drops the plunger. That's one cycle. It'll then build pressure 40 or 50 PSI, depending on whether you have a lathe or a mill and how many metering points there are. Then it'll build pressure, it'll flip the pressure switch, and over two to minutes or so, it'll drain back to zero. Because the point, say, for X is closer than the point for maybe Z, because it goes straight up the column, it pressurizes the entire system, and then the metering units have a little spring and a piston inside, and they meter out a certain amount of oil, say two drops over a minute, something like that. This is a little manifold that I built with a pressure gauge, and it includes 10 metering units, say, to represent a lathe, and one for the spindle. And so I can hook this up to a pump, pump the pump, and make sure I'm getting the equal amount of lube out of everything, out of the spindle, the pressure matches, and I can watch the pressure gauge. There's a Waylube repair kit that comes with this line, all the fittings and everything that you can pick up at CNC replacement parts, as well as the replacement filters and the metering units. So let's go ahead and take it apart. One thing I'll show you, behind over here is the solenoid valve for the spindle. Whenever the spindle is rotating on a mill or a lathe, there's a little solenoid that puts out about 20 PSI with a little bit of oil, and then that lubricates the bearings. So to start with, we're gonna do maintenance on the front here. And we'll pop off this Waylube tank. Let's see. This one is pretty clean. Usually there's that much muck and even chips get inside here. So now we can see the bottom is where the suction filter and over here is where the inline filter is. Now I'm gonna lay it on its back so that we can all see, but when you're working on your machine, you almost have to lay on your back and look up underneath here to get the filters out. So hopefully you can see all right. You'll need a little pick. There's a ring and then there's a little spiral snap ring that clips that holds the suction filters in. And there's four tabs all the way around. And if you just kind of push in and get underneath it, you can pop out the ring. So now I'm gonna lay these out in the order that I take them out. So there's the ring, there's another ring, here's the felt, here's the fine mesh, and here's the coarse filter. These, these look pretty good. Normally I've seen these black or just totally plugged full of wax and other items. So to replace it, there's a new one. I don't want to get it dirty, but you'll put in this one. I kind of mucked that up. You'll put in that one, this one, and then the ring. And the ring goes one direction. You'll see when you take it apart and it pops in. And then to fit the spring back in and the keeper, Start at one of the four tabs and get it underneath. Then work your way around and you'll want your pick again and you can press it in and it'll stay there nicely. It's a lot easier to do it here on this table than it is lying on your back under the machine. That's how to replace your suction filter. A pair of channel locks work just fine to pull out the intake. Let's see how black this filter is. 
not too bad. So I'll pop the filter out. Normally I have a bucket around the back of the machine I can pour this into. And there's an O-ring on the bottom of here and it can be kind of held in tight. Let's see if we can get it out, there we go. Yeah, this is pretty nasty oil, it's pretty dark. And we'll just pop that O-ring out. Drain that, I'll take a rag, clean in here, clean in there, clean this O-ring. So this sits with the flat side down and up inside here is another O-ring and sometimes it'll come out and be sitting on the top of here. If it doesn't, don't worry about it, just clean, drop the new one in and plug it back in. So after you've done this on your system, you've pulled this out, you've pulled this out, your system has a lot of air in it and you're gonna wanna bleed the system by just kinda pumping it and that'll bleed all the air out and pressurize it because it'll pump it through the metering units. But if the little cam on the gear is in the wrong spot, you can't pull the plunger up. So you'll need to run your spindle for five or 10 minutes, do something to run the spindle until the gear moves and the plunger drops and then you can grab it and pump it. So this is how to do a lube maintenance with both filters. If your system is plugged, you can pump it and pump it and it goes to 40 PSI and to 50 PSI, 60, and it just holds and holds and holds. It means that whatever gunk was in your tank got sucked up and went all the way down to these metering units. And then it plugged up the little piston inside. And now there's no oil getting out. So your system will alarm if it sees no pressure or if it sees pressure all the time. It needs to see the pressure switch go high and go low over about a 10 minute period. If these are plugged, you get the fun job of pulling all the way covers back and getting a little 3 8 disconnecting every single one of them, pumping the system and make sure that you get oil out of every one and then putting it all back together with replacements. I call it the Kentucky Fried Chicken Test because if you put a white rag underneath here and you pump this and let it sit for 10 minutes and you get a little bit of oil on your napkin, it's like eating chicken from Kentucky Fried. You'll see it there. So do your Kentucky Fried Chicken Test. Make sure every metering unit on every ball screw and every linear rail is getting oil and you should be good. Your machine will stay lubricated and should run for quite a while. Thanks for watching this video. If you need parts, tools, or help, check out CNC Replacement Parts, and have a good day.